It's story time. Okay, I'm gonna tell you about how I got here. Uh, this is a 35 year long story approximately from when I was there and now I'm here. I was that person and now I'm this person. Why am I in front of this lens uh, telling people about stuff that most people don't know much about at all? But it's also about uh, how our values and philosophies shape what we do and what we don't do and how that's not really enough either. And we'll get back to that uh, presently. So I grew up uh, probably a little bit different. My parents taught me how to think. Um, I learned how to learn before I went to school and uh, therefore school was always difficult for me. It was always like a friction point. When I went to kindergarten, they wanted to put me in first grade because I just already knew everything they were gonna teach us and I was bored. I was given a choice by my parents, uh, true to their values, and I said, no, I think I'll stay, which I regretted for the next 12 years because I could have graduated a year early. But in retrospect, I think that was better because it was already hard enough to interface with school and society being really a different kind of person that wasn't indoctrinated into like some kind of uh, strong social uh, restrictions that kept me part of a, a herd or a group. Fast forward to high school, I discovered punk rock. And a lot of that was the ideology, like the ideology of self-governance and, you know, individualism and, and personal freedom and stuff. And being like, okay, well, we don't like the system. They're trying to control us. We can see that it's making people sick and unhappy. And we're just headed in a bad direction. Like we could just see this is a train. This is like a speeding train. And somewhere down there where we can't see there's like a cliff or something, right? You know, the logical thing to start thinking is like, you know, we'd have to be self-governing and so what does that look like? It's like anarchy or something, right? That kind of eventually led like me and other people and some of the bands I was listening to to start thinking about, well, what does that look like in, pr in a practical sense, right? It's, if it's not just an idea, like if we don't want to be part of the system, and then we're just hypocrites for like continuing to uh, engage in it and be part of it and not oppose it in any way. And a lot of the opposition was just whining. And that's typical of any political movement. There's always an enemy, right? You pick an enemy and you're like, it's all their fault. We get rid of them, everything would be okay. That doesn't work. And there was a lot of that going on in the punk scene. And it was just like, okay, no, this is up to us. Like if we're not, if we're not gonna just step away from this thing we and say, well, we don't need you. Like we can, you know, function independently without you then what, What you know, like who's gonna do? Are you gonna wait for a better government to come along and tell you what to do better? Uh, you know, like what's, <laughs> what's the alternative? And so then that eventually leads to the logical conclusion of, well, you have to take care of your own means of production. And that just led me down this path of like, okay, how do I learn to take care of myself? Like, how can I make and grow and, you know, uh, survive outside of the system that I don't wanna be part of, I don't wanna support, and I can see is gonna mess me up. Like I don't want to. I don't want to join that herd because I'm. I'm looking. I'm like this is not. This is this isn't going well for those people <laughs> over there. So even at 16, I was already starting to look for books on homesteading. Remember, no internet, right? No internet. So I had to go to the library. We had a pretty big library in the town I was in, and I just couldn't find anything. You know, there was just very little to read, and so I didn't know where to go from there. So it kind of like backburnered that thing. About when I graduated from high school, I ran across some. I must have been reading something about like vision quests and American Indian vision quests, and I was like, that's an interesting idea. You know, essentially the thing is like go out somewhere else, be alone, be without food, sometimes without water for a period of time and just kind of be open to what what happens and what comes to you. You know, I wasn't interested in any of the cultural stuff or the iconography. I, I was just interested in like, this is an idea that I could go through something like this because no one was offering me anything, you know, and my site had nothing nothing like that. The closest we had was like a career aptitude test, right? Where you write down and the answer questions are like, oh, you should be a fireman, you know? And I did it. I, w I walked up into some state park in the Redwoods. I hiked up this little side creek that I figured no one would have wandered up probably all year, let alone while I was there, you know, for four days. I built a little circle of logs. I had some food with me for, for later afterwards. Hung that up in a tree somewhere. And all I had with me in the circle was a sleeping bag and a water bottle. And I took all my clothes off even, just to be extra like stripped down to nothing. And I took my contacts out, which means I'm like super blind, right? So I wear contacts. Now my focus point's probably here. Like then it was maybe like 18 inches or something like that. Wow, will that really drive you 
into yourself and re it removes all the distractions, right? All day we're distracting ourselves with work, with, uh, you know, conversations with people, with the internet, you know, with watching TV, whatever, to just avoid all the stuff that we don't want to think about. You know, those problems that plague you, relationship stuff, uh, family stuff, whatever it is. So I had to deal with some of that stuff for sure. But mostly I thought about food because I was really hungry. I just started thinking, okay, what would it look like if I was producing my own food? I married these two ideas. I'm hungry and I want to be more self-reliant. For days, literally, I went, like most of this time, I think, I spent thinking up this like farm or homestead thing, uh, which definitely had a skateboard ramp, by the way. There was a pond and fish, the animals, the plants, the different trees. Like I thought of every food I could think of and thought of like, could I grow that here? Like, could I grow an avocado? Could I grow a pistachio. I didn't know anything, right? I didn't know anything about this stuff at the time. But that was like, okay, that's what I should be doing. Oh, I was able to like stick it out just out of like determination and, and, and being like, I said I was going to do this. I like, you know, have some confidence that it's going to be valuable for me. And even when, you know, late in the, in the process, when I was like, I'm just really thinking about the same thing over and over and over again, like I can still visualize that little homestead farm thing that I dreamed up in my mind. Um, I still stuck it out and I was like, okay, well, this isn't done because I said I was going to be here for this long and I did it. You know, for a kid who probably had never gone hungry for more than 24 hours and even then because I was sick and I probably still ate some like uh, saltines and 7-Up because I had a stomach flu or something like that. Uh, to just go out and be like, I don't think I told anyone exact, I didn't tell anyone exactly where I was going. I might have told like a friend, a close friend or something that I was even doing it at all and uh, just did it, you know. That's not like a very normal thing to do. It really cemented together this idea that freedom is not a social construct. Freedom is not the absence of uh, tyranny or control. It's not like, you know, there's a whole thing out there that you don't understand that is siphoning stuff into you as long as you do your little part in the hive to uh, keep the hive running. And then, you know, if, if someone gains a lot of control over part of that, like your food or something, then they can manipulate you, right? And they can control you. Like, are you free if you're not capable of not relying on that? that that's the thing. You know, and uh, 35 years later, I've done that my entire adult life. I've pursued uh, self-reliance skills. I've been doing YouTube for six years. I've been blogging for longer than that. I've been a teacher of this stuff almost my entire adult life, probably starting when I was, no, I remember it was starting when I was 23 years old. I taught my first class. You know, I took classes from my instructors who became my friends and colleagues right away. And I TA'd for them, like helping them teach classes right away. And that's all I've done ever since. And I can see the ripple effects, you know, especially on YouTube, especially now with the internet. There's, I mean, we're basically laying down a record of information and how it spreads and progress and people's progress and in, in their goals and what they're doing. And, you know, I can definitely see the effect of my content on people, on different cultures in the internet with the different, you know, things that I do. You know, that's super gratifying to see those ripple effects going out. And like some of those people are teachers and they're, you know, they'll have YouTube channels now or, or even like students of mine from way back, you know, and they've been teaching their entire adult lives and stuff like that. All because I was that person that acted. I didn't just find punk rock and say, yeah, dude, think for yourself, man, anarchy, right? I was like, what does that mean? What does that mean? How do we act on it? What do we do? And I acted on it, you know, in the best way I could, the clumsy way that I could. And, you know, that's just followed through. So that's why I was saying it's not enough to have these, you know, say you have these values and philosophies, but what are they worth if you don't put them into action? Someone lends you their car and you crash it, right? And you say, damn, dude, I totally accept responsibility for that. See you later. You know, right? Is that accepting responsibility for it? Right, it's the same thing. Are you gonna act on what you say or are you just gonna give it lip service and say that you believe in it and say that's who you are? And I think those are the two real take home messages here are, you know, this idea that freedom isn't just the absence of tyranny and it has to do with your physical and mental independence. Like now I walk through the world and I see a land, you know, a resource scape that I can exploit. Um, I don't mean exploit in a bad way, but just to make use of to make what I need. You know, I know what the trees around here are. I know what they're useful for. I can kill an animal. I can take it apart. I know what every part of it's useful for. 
I can grow food, you know, I can come into an environment with essentially almost nothing, hopefully not nothing, but you know, you get the idea. And I walk around with this self-containedness and I see the world in a completely different way than other people see it. And there's intangible benefits to that that I cannot adequately express. And the best advice I can give um, toward living that way, whatever your interest is, is to live towards curiosity and possibility and not be inhibited constantly by fear and not uh, sit around, you know, on that side of the lens asking who's going to tell me what to do and how to do it. Live toward that curiosity and take the chances because you, you can look out and you'd say people, you know, like um, influencers or creative people and people that really foment change in society are special people. And in some cases, there may be an, an, a, like an element of that. But a lot of it is just, um, you know, willingness to act and willingness to start acting. Do you hear people all the time, stories about people who are like, just kind of like cogs in a machine or something. And then one day they're just like, hey, you know, they have some epiphany and they're like, screw it, you know, throw everything away and they become this creative person person that in, in a few years is doing these amazing things, right, that are just like unique in their field. So that's my uh, advice is just live toward curiosity and live toward possibility instead of um, being inhibited by fear.